Hi, this is Sean, and in this lesson we're going to be talking about comping, being the chord player in the band. So first of all, what is comping? Half the people say it means accompanying, and the other half say it means complementing. The truth is somewhere in the middle. And with comping, there are a few things people do, especially newer players, that just get in their own way. So we'll be talking about my top five tips for comping. And why should you bother doing it if you're not even going to be playing with a band? Well, comping is a great place to learn your craft in terms of swing and in terms of not being in the way and blending in with the music. Even if you're playing alone as a piano player, those skills are important. Otherwise, everything is jutting out full speed ahead, full volume as well. Like they say, if the only tool you have is a hammer, then everything is a nail, right? I'll be demonstrating with the tune There Will Never Be Another You, just the chords of it how we should be playing differently when the melody would be in or when the bass is doing certain things with the drums etc so let's dig into it first of all let's take a look at what we have we have one of my tracks here where we have the head just meaning the tune and then we have some solo sections bass and drums will be chord players for the tune there will never be another you so my first tip would be this because i hear students do it every time they start comping newer players is keep the hands together. Of course, some people disagree with this as soon as I've said it because they've been told something else or they might do something else. But most newer players are comping like this. Two, three, four. Like as a guitar or as a pop tune. they think it's their job to fill up all the space it's actually not now at a more advanced level you might play a little bit of movement in comping sure but do you know what you can go out and earn money and sound good by just cleaning up your playing a bit so this is what i mean three four one two three four see the hands are together rhythmically whatever one hand does the other does now we're not in the way firing all our bullets at once right <laughs> there's still time to build up intensity for the bass to start walking and the drums to change the feel we don't have to give everything we've got in the first chorus so that's the first thing hands together not strumming it like a guitar and it's not a pop tune okay tip number two blend in with the band which we've kind of alluded to already but we don't want to be out in front all the time so if i just go from the second half of the introduction to we don't want to be the only thing that can be heard. <laughs> we want to be soft. Now I did play a little movement. <laughs> you know, be, be part of the band. Don't be something that juts out. me of another tip which is an extra one there seems to be this idea that all comping needs to take place at the top of the piano it really doesn't because you'll get in the way if you're at the top all the time if people are always up here then the frequencies they're going to fight you know there's nothing wrong with being at the lower part of the piano in fact that's a really pretty part to be in and when people do all the stuff that we're told in jazz education, which is rootless chords all the time and 13s and sharp 11s on everything, when we do that, we can't get deeper down the piano because that's not how we play when we lower down. So people play too high anyway. So that's just another little thing aside. OK, next tip is lose the pedal when you're playing swing. We haven't started playing swing yet, so we're going to see what that feels like but lose the pedal so when i'm here i'm going to swing more with no pedal you'll see when i'm pedaling because there's a little button down there that says sustain which is going to flash when i play the pedal there's no need for it
So when we're playing in swing, if we pedal too much, it's just going to wash. It's going to be like this. To when, by that I mean walking bass. If you have a real specific reason to do it, that's different. But don't do it just because there's nothing else to do. Security pedal. And now we get to one of the main points, which is differentiating. So this is tip number four, I think, <laughs> differentiating between the twos and the walking bass style. Generally, when it's a swing tune, the bass will be playing in twos during the head, meaning two main notes per bar with possible decorations. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And then in the solo sections, we'll get walking bass most of the time. So it'll be like this. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, most newer comping players play the same. Doesn't matter what's going on. So that's one of the things we want to be talking about. I listen to the bass more than anything. So when I'm in twos, in other words, in the head, this will normally happen when the tune is being played, the head. When that's the section, I'm trying to lay back quite a lot volume wise, dynamic range wise and rhythmically, not overly rhythmic. Also frequency wise, I don't want to be at the top of the piano all the time. And when the bass starts to walk, then I want to be more rhythmic and less or no pedal. And we'll see a bit about how to do that rhythmic stuff in a bit, because there's a lot to do there. There's the whole art form, but we'll get you started. So. Let me take the second half of the head into the solo so you can hear the difference between comping during the head, twos in the bass, and comping for walking bass in the solos. Okay, this is the second half of the head. doubles there. Movement, which is a whole other show. <laughs> Sometimes shorter chords, but try not to get too stabby. So now we're getting some differentiation in style as well, in where we are on the piano. And we can do that when we get into walking bass specifically, the solos, let's say. Practice things like pushes, so chords are early. That's something a lot of people don't do. So one, two, three, four, and. You can practice pushing all your chords and you'll sound all right. It's not something you want to do all the time, but it's a great exercise, so like this. I'm going to push every chord. Three, four, and two, 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 three, four, and. Also, practice lates. This time, one and two, three, four, one and two, three, four, or even two, one, two, three, four. Let's try, let's try the one ands. Here we go. Let's try some twos. One, two, three, four. And two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and. So you see, 
start to mix them up. I didn't warn you that was going to happen because I didn't really know. <laughs> so you start to mix up lates and pushes and coming in on the two or the three or the two and or the four and. And now things start to come to life. Differentiating between the head and the solos is a really big deal. And it doesn't have to involve what a lot of music seems to these days, which is harder, louder, faster. Of course, you can build intensity if the soloist is doing that, but that's not necessary from the get go. Otherwise, you won't have anything else to say. OK, so I hope you found these tips useful in your comping. And if you're interested in more stuff like this, then consider becoming a Jazz Skills member where I've got hundreds of lessons for all levels, whether you're just starting out or you're an advanced student to get you to the next level with your playing. Thanks a lot for watching and see you on the next one. Bye for now.